video, I'll explain how to use variable blocks in your NXTG programming. This will be a first in a series of videos that describe software techniques that might help your team learn how to take your NXTG programming skills to the next level. Variable blocks are a basic and important thing to master in NXTG programming. Variable blocks can be used to hold data that can be passed into and out of loop blocks, switch blocks, and my blocks. Additionally, Variable blocks become necessary in some situations where the NXTG software won't let you run a wire where you need it to go. For example, if you need to pass an external value into a switch statement within a switch statement, the NXTG editor won't allow you to do that using wires, so variables are a way of sometimes doing something that the NXTG editor won't allow you to do. Before you can use a variable, you must first create it. This is done by selecting Define Variables from the Edit pull-down menu. To create a new variable, simply hit Create in the pop-up window. Notice that there are three default variables that are already defined, called Logic1, Number1, and Text1. We won't be using these. Instead, we'll be creating our own new variables. You must give your newly created variable a name. A name could be anything, but it is good programming practice to make the variable name descriptive of what it will be used for. For example, if the variable is going to be holding the, uh, the power that a motor connected to port C will be driven with, a good name might be power C. Naming your variables descriptively will make your code much more understandable. As you can see here, there are three types of variables in NXTG, logic, number, and text. Logic variables can only have two values, true or false. These are not the words true or false. The correct way to think of these true and false values is by analogy to a light bulb that can be either on or off. The on state corresponds to the true value and the off state corresponds to a false value. A good use of logic variable might be to hold the value of whether a motor should be driven in the forward or reverse direction, since motor and move locks have direction inputs of type logic. Number variables are used to hold numbers such as 1, 3.14159, negative 50, and 1 million. NXTG version 1.0 used only integer numbers, but beginning in version 2.0, number variables could represent real numbers such as 1.23. A typical use of a number variable in NXTG FLL programming might be to hold the number of degrees to rotate a motor or a variable which holds the radius of the wheels your robot is using. The final type of variable in NXTG is text. Text variables can hold strings of characters such as mission1. A typical use of a text variable is to hold text that is to be displayed on the NXT's LCD screen. Putting text on your screen is a good way to help you see what your NXT program is doing and can prove very useful in debugging complicated code that isn't working properly. Last year, we used text variables to hold the name of the current mission where we were running. Our master program would display the current mission on the screen so we could know which mission was the current mission. I'll create a few variables as an example. First, I'll create a number variable called degrees which we can imagine will be used to hold the numerical value of the number of degrees that we desire our robot's motor to rotate. To create another variable, simply click Create after you're done defining the current variable. Next, I'll create a logic variable called DIR, which, for example, can be used to hold the direction to be used to run the drive wheel motors of a robot. Finally, I'll create a text variable called Greeting, which can be used to hold information to be displayed on the screen. After creating the variables, close the pop-up window. At any time, you can add, delete, or even change the names of existing variables by going back to the defined variables pull-down menu. Now that I have variables defined of each data type, I'll demonstrate how to use these variables in a simple NXTG program. The variable block can be found under the data menu. It looks like a suitcase. To use a variable in your program, simply grab the suitcase and drag it into place on the beam. After the variable block is placed, you'll notice that it defaults to logic1, which is not one of the three variables we defined, but is a default variable that exists in all NXTG programs. Let's change the variable to the greeting variable, text variable that we just defined by first clicking on the variable block and then selecting greeting from the list of valid variables. Using a variable in your program is fairly simple. You'll notice that there are merely two actions that you can do to a variable block, read or write. 
Write puts a new value into a variable, and read allows you to get at a value previously stored in a variable. Variables hold data, and before that data can be read and used, it must be defined. In programming lingo, this is called initializing the variable. All the variables used in your program must be initialized or written to before reading them. Otherwise, your program could behave unpredictably. Let's initialize our variable named greeting with the text hello. To do this, under action in the variable block, change it to write instead of read, and then type in the value hello for the variable here. When the action of the variable block is read, notice that the data hub of the variable block is on the right side, which indicates it's an output. When the variable block is in read mode, the arrow points to the right. When the action of the variable block is in write, the data hub is accessible on the left side to allow a value from the earlier block to be written into the variable. Now that the variable has been defined, let's make a simple program to see how to read and use text variables. After writing the value hello into the greeting variable, later in the program we can read that value out and display it on the LCD screen of the NXT brick. Here I'm adding another variable block to read the greeting variable. This time, the action should be read. Let's put down a display block as an example. By left-clicking here, you can open the data hub of the display block. It has nine inputs. The one we're interested in is the fourth from the top, which is called text. To make a connection, left-click on the variable block's output, and then left-click again on the text input of the display block. The display block needs to be configured to display text, which is done by changing the action from image to text. You normally type the text you want to display in this field right here, but in this case, we're providing it to the display block from our variable block, so leave this blank. There's just one thing we, one thing further we need to do to make this program usable, and that's to add a wait block configured to wait until the enter button is pressed at the end. This allows the value to be held on the screen, otherwise the value would flash on the screen briefly and disappear too quickly for your eyes to see, since the program finishes running very quickly. Notice how the wire is solid orange. This indicates that the connection between the two blocks is correct. When you run a data wire from a variable block output to another block's input, you must make sure that their two hubs are the same data type. Let's see what happens if I improperly connect our variable block's text output to an input on the display block that is expecting a number. You can delete the wire by clicking on its endpoint, so let's delete the wire now. After making an improper connection, you'll notice that the wire is a dashed line instead of a solid line. This indicates an improper connection of two different data types which will not work. Now I'll put it back to the way it was. Okay, now let's test our program. If everything works alright, then it, the LCD should display hello. And it does! Next, let's see how to work with logic variables. Let's put another variable block down near the start of our program to initialize the dir variable that we created earlier. Here I'm going to write the value true to the dir variable, which will make the motor rotate in the forward direction. Next, I'm going to put down another variable block and read the dir variable. Let's put a move block down and connect the dir variable to be read to the direction input of the move block. Finally, let's initialize the degrees variable we created earlier, which is a variable of type number, to a value of 2012 degrees. Next, let's put another variable block down to read the degrees variable and wire it to the move block's duration input. In the move block, the units of duration should be changed to degrees in order for our degrees value to be interpreted properly. Again, note that all wire connections are solid lines, indicating that we haven't incorrectly wired two different data types together. Also notice that text data types wires are orange, number data type wires are yellow, and logic data type wires are green. An interesting thing about NXTG variables is that they are global which means that if you have a variable named wheel radius that is defined in one my block used by your program, then this variable can be used in all other parts of your program. Okay, now I'll try out the program we just wrote on our robot, Tubbot. 
You can see that it displayed hello on the screen, which was read from the variable block named greeting. Now the program is waiting for me to press the enter key. After I press the enter key, the move block will run, which was configured to rotate the wheels 2012 degrees in the forward direction. I expect Tubbot to actually move backwards, because I know our motors are installed backwards. Don't forget, the direction and number of degrees came out of the variables named DIR and degrees. Okay, here it goes. After these very simple examples, you may be wondering what the big deal is about variables. Because I haven't been demonstrated anything yet that couldn't be done more easily by directly typing values directly into the display or move blocks, variables become important when you are making your own my block that has inputs. For example, your team might want to make a line follower my block that has inputs that tell it which edge of the line to follow, or for how far. Without variables, creating complex my blocks with inputs and outputs becomes difficult or even impossible. So if your team wants to learn how to create your own cool my blocks, you're first going to need to start getting comfortable with using variable blocks. And as I've just shown, using variable blocks is quite straightforward and easy to understand. In my next video, I'll teach you how to create and use a simple my block that will allow you to control how far you want your robot to go, specifying the distance in millimeters instead of degrees or rotations. This video provides a practical example of how variables can be used in NXTG programming. Yeah!